Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a great day so far. In this series, we've only talked about one way to store a collection of data, and that was through the use of a list. In this video, we'll be adding one more way to store a large collection of data by using dictionaries, which happen to be a little bit cooler than lists. With that being said, let's get into this video. Before we start using dictionaries, let's go over the basic syntax. To define a dictionary, we're gonna use the curly braces rather than the square brackets. Within each dictionary exists a key and a value. You could think of the key being almost like the index for a list. Each value in a dictionary must be assigned to a key just how each item in a list is assigned an index value. As you'll see in a second, we'll use the keys to grab desired values from our dictionary. Each key value pair is separated by a semicolon, which is essentially the thing that links the two together. All right, so we're gonna make our way over to our favorite editor. To start off, I think we're gonna make a dictionary of students. Students, and we'll use our curly braces to define the dictionary. Our first key is gonna be student one, and we'll give that student a name, and we'll say it's Jill. Um, we'll add another student in there. We'll just copy and paste these to make it easier. That and that. So we'll call this one student two. And we'll have student three. And then we'll replace Jill with, uh, let's go Timothy. And the third student, let's go with Bob. Can't go wrong with Bob. Okay, so like I mentioned before, each dictionary is assembled of key value pairs. So in this case, student one is the key and the value would be Jill. Student two is the key, Timothy is the value, and so on. You can have as many of these as you want. To print them out, we'll come down here, type in print and students to reference the dictionary variable and we'll use our square brackets and then we'll just got to type in our key. So in this case, let's type in students one or student one. And this, if we save it and run it, we get Jill, which is the value assigned to that key. We can change this to student two and we should get Timothy, which we do. Now, one problem with this using the square brackets is if we tried student four, save it and run it, we'll actually get an error. This is because the key of student four actually doesn't exist, we never defined it, so there is no value. So when we wanna grab a value, it is better to use something like the dot get method. So if we tried student four again, save this, let me just clear the output. We'll run this. And you'll see we'll actually get none instead of the error. So whenever you're trying to reference a value from a dictionary, it is preferred to use the get method rather than using the opening and closing brackets because if there happens to be a case where the key doesn't exist, then your program won't crash. Another thing about the keys, they actually don't have to be strings. We could use an integer value instead to define the key. So we could use one, oh, not the value, two and three as keys for each of our values. So we can replace this. If we wanted to print out Bob, we can just put in a three for our key, save it and run it. And then you'll see that we get Bob printed out and we no longer have to type out student three. Now, once you define a dictionary, that doesn't mean you can't add any more elements into the dictionary. If we wanted to add more students into our students dictionary, all we'd have to do is type in students. And now in this case, we do wanna use the opening and closing brackets. And then within here, we're gonna type in our new key. So we'll type in four for student four. Oh, we'll actually make that an integer. And then we'll set that equal to, let's make the student's name Frank. So now if we come down here, we could print out our whole dictionary. Oh. Save that, run it and you'll see that Frank has been added to our list. So unlike grabbing values from the dictionary, it is okay to use the square brackets in this case because if the key does exist, so if we were to take and make this key one, you can actually see what happens. Come down here, you'll see that Jill has just been changed to Frank. So that's how you go about changing a value in your dictionary. 
you just take the key that's associated to the value that you would like to change and then drop in the new value. Another thing we could do with dictionaries is delete an item from the dictionary. To do that, we're gonna type in the del for delete keyword, and then we're gonna type in our dictionary, so students, and then we'll use our open and closing brackets and type in the key that we'd like to delete. So let's delete Frank and say that Frank, he got expelled. So, students, save it and run it. And now you'll see if we look at the output that Frank was in the first assignment of the dictionary, but then we later expelled Frank and now he has been removed. So before I forget, we had this dot get method to grab a value from the list. We could also use the square bracket method to get a value, but there also exists a method to update a value as well. So if we type in students, we can use the dot update method and this behaves the same exact way had we used this method. So if we define a new key and it doesn't exist in the dictionary, it will just add that in there just the same way that it did above. It won't throw an error or anything. So you can use either this method or this method to update and add values into your dictionary. If we wanted to add another one, let's say this key is a four and we'll use, say his name is Kevin. Kevin, so we'll save this, run it. So you'll see that Kevin was added into this list even though there wasn't a key there, so we just added, but we can also, if we wanted to change something, so if we wanted to update Timothy's name to have a capital letter, so we would just type in two for the key, and then we'll just type in Timothy, but with a capital T this time. Save it and run it. And you'll see that now Timothy has a capital T. And one more thing before I end this video, the values assigned to these keys can actually be anything you want them to be. They could be strings, integers, booleans, functions, lists, or even other dictionaries. So let's see what that would look like. We'll get rid of all this, but we'll copy Timothy's name. We'll keep him around. And then we'll make this into another dictionary and we'll just store a few values about Timothy. We'll say name. Timothy, and we'll just give him an age. Oh. Age, and we'll just say the guy's 17. So we'll save this, we'll get rid of all of this stuff. We don't need the get three, because that'll just be none. So if we print out students, let's just take a look at what the dictionary looks like now. Save it and run it. You'll see we get our key, but then there'll be another dictionary assigned to that key. So if we wanted to reference a value within here, what we would have to do is we would use our opening and closing brackets, one, and then we would come here and we can type in name. So we can save and run that and you'll see we'll get Timothy. Another thing we can do is we can use the dot get. So we can do this, one dot get, and then we'll say name or let's grab his age, we did that last time. And we'll see we get 17. And I believe we can do this as well. We should be able to do this with a one, close that. Yeah. So you can do either of those three methods to grab a value from within a nested dictionary. So I think that's a nice spot to stop for this video. I did just throw a bunch of information at you. Before watching the next video though, I would recommend practicing this concept just a few more times because we're gonna be going over how to loop through the dictionaries and obtaining those keys and values that way. As always, if you have any questions or you aren't really understanding a topic, just leave a comment down below and I'd be glad to help you out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.